Well, hello, Taurus, and welcome to your monthly reading. Happy New Year and happy 2023. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to mention that before I did um, everybody's readings, I did put out a video talking about the energies and the astrological influences of January. Um, these things might be affecting your entire year, so it might be a good idea to watch that video as well. <clears throat> so I wanted to start our year out with archangels and affirmations because I love those things very much, and um, so I'm going to get right to it. As I'm shuffling the cards and I'm just tapping into your energy, I just ask that you take a nice deep breath and relax and really allow your angels to come in close to you. I mean, they're always with you. <laughs> but just make a decision to kind of attune yourself to hear, see, feel, and understand what you need to um, in regards to January 2023. So thank you so much, angels, guides, guardians, ancestors, archangels, and the power of God and goddess for giving us clarity, comfort, and information for our lovely Tauruses for January 2023. What do they need to know for January? Archangel Raziel, take your power back. So I love this card. I love this Archangel. He is kind of the mystic of the Archangel realm. He is associated with metaphysics, sacred geometry, um, high level mysticism and magic, um, just very much is here to help us understand the deeper meaning of things and the symbology of the universe. Um, so he's here with you and he really wants you to assess um, where in your life, Taurus, you feel like you are mm, losing your power. You know that you're losing power to something when you're feeling um, like you don't have very, very much control or say in a situation or you feel like you might be scared or nervous around a person. Um, also, you might feel drained, um, overwhelmed. Just think of like, you know, something that you feel like you have, you, you don't feel very powerful around that's those are the things that he's going to be referring to that's going to be a big deal for you this month as we go forward um for january is you kind of assessing your life and doing a little inventory and just say where do i feel desperate where do i feel weak and um how can i feel more empowered you know where does my mind need to go how do i need to look at the situation what kind of actions do i need to take um, to pull my power back, to feel like I have a little bit more say or control or, um, you know, that I'm, I'm feeling fulfilled rather than drained um, in this situation. The card says, use your God-given power and intention to manifest blessings in your life. So, um, this, you know, when you are able to manifest this is a wonderful way to, to, to realize your own power, to say, wow, I came up with this idea. I visualized it. I affirmed it. I took steps towards it. And here it is. That's how we increase our self-esteem and our spiritual self-esteem. And when we've done that, or we can even look back over our lives and go, wow, look at the times that I have really manifested. Everything that you have right now is something that you at one time wanted or a variation of it. So um, and if there's still things that you're um, working on, you know that you have the power to create it, to manifest it. Um, so this month is really going to be about that theme. It's about manifesting in in the in a way to where you feel good about your own ability to create the kind of life that you want to live. So let's look at affirmations here for Taurus. I love affirmations. I'm just shuffling this up and asking, you know, what do my Tauruses need to be affirming in their life? What do they what do they need to be thinking? What belief do they need to be working on right now? And this might be something you might want to write down. So, right, Taurus, your affirmation. I am at peace with my age. <laughs> this is interesting. This is like so specific, right? Um, regardless of your age, somebody in our world and our society is making fun of it. If you're a Gen Z, if you're a millennial, if you're a Gen X, if you're a boomer, whatever it is, like those taglines, those those words are actually not those uh, labels. They're not really helpful or productive. 
it separates us, it se segregates us, it makes us feel like we're not connected to people of different ages. So I kind of urge people to get out of using those kinds of labels. Um, and, you know, there is ageism. Either you're too young for something or you should be focused on something else during this time of your life or you're too old for something. And so, you know, maybe this is maybe you're taking your power back from what society says you should be doing right now in your life. You know, I, I know that when I was a young mother, um, you know, the, the society says stay home with your kids well, I was ambitious. I wanted to own my own business. I wanted to go to school. I wanted to get educated. And, you know, so um, as as I've gotten older now, now I'm doing, I think, what people wanted me to do in my 20s. But, you know, forget that. Um, so you might be kind of coming up against this cultural or family or even people close to you, maybe your partner, thinks that you should be doing something because of where you are in life. Um, and that's going to come up this month. So I'm at peace with my age. I love this, the other side of this card. It says each age has its own special joys and experiences. I am always the perfect age for where I am in life. Oh my gosh. I love that. So instead of using that word should, I should be doing this. I shouldn't have done this when I was this age and blah, blah, blah. Each age has its own special joys and experiences. And it's true. When we were children, there were special joys and experiences. When we were young adults, if you're getting like me up in, you know, middle age to retirement or and beyond, special joys and experiences are, are there for you. Gifts at every age, gifts at every season of your life, gifts to receive and to enjoy at every turn. So, and everybody's experience of their generational life is going to be different. So I really want you to take your power back from the shoulds, the cultural conditioning, the labels that you might have on yourself. Those labels are limitations. Nothing should limit, limit you. In fact, Louise L. Hay, who wrote these cards, she is the most impressive person, didn't buy into age at all. I think she started her publishing company either in her late 50s or 60s, Hay House, which has produced more books, uh, spiritual books than any other publishing company. She um, learned how to ballroom dance in her 70s. She learned how to paint amazing art when she was in her 80s. She's incredible. So yeah, don't let the phase of life you're in slow you down. Okay, Taurus, that's your soapbox for the day. All right. Let's get into the tarot section of this reading. I feel like everyone could use these two cards. <laughs> and, you know, personalize this. Maybe you are at peace with your age. Maybe it's your look. Maybe it's your income. Maybe you're comparing yourself to other people or you got that word should. There's so much power that's lost in doing that. So it's just about finding peace where you are. Where you are is the only place you can grow from. Okay, so what does Taurus need to know for January? We're going to do a beginning, middle, and end of the month here for Taurus. And then we will do clarifiers. So beginning, middle, and end of January here. The beginning of the month, woo-woo, we got the Ace of Fire. You're starting off the month with a, just a fresh start. You're feeling this energy of the new year. You feel creative, inspired, new passion. Now, let me tell you, if you're not in line with this, um, see what you are losing your power to see what is draining you and see if you can't, you know, start to empower yourself and take your power back so that you do start feeling inspired, creative, passionate. This is the beginning of something new. Aces are always like seeds. This is like the beginning of something incredible. This is something that is lighting you up. You're excited about it. And there's a lot of hope around it is what I'm feeling. So you're like, I hope this works out. Hope is a wonderful ingredient for manifesting. And what comes after that is absolute expectation that it will happen. So move your verbiage from I hope this happens to this is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Like I 100 uh, percent, whatever it is that you're manifesting, whatever it is that is inspiring you right now, that is motivating you, um, whatever your fresh start is. Believe in it, have hope in it, and expect that it will flourish. 
middle of the month. Here's the six of air. So we've got a, a couple things going on here. This, this is one of those cards that is kind of multi-leveled. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go through them. The, the major part of this card is a new perspective, an eye-opening experience, maybe a, a small epiphany, something that really helps you look at something differently. This is probably having to do with taking your power back because when you feel empowered, the, the world looks different to you. When you're looking through the eyes of someone who's empowered versus the eyes of someone who feels like a victim, there's a lot more opportunity for you that you'll just recognize, you'll see, and you'll let yourself go after. So there's a new perspective. There's also the chance that there's some travel or some change of location here in the middle of the month. Travel and changing location can be physical, like you're literally moving or, or going on a trip, or it could be metaphoric, like you are traveling through negative beliefs and into a broader uh, mindset. The other way that I like to read this card is that very often it represents a full recovery of some sort. So if you or someone you know has been suffering with an addiction or an illness or a wound, um, be it mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, there's a recovery here. So good news in that regards to a recovery of some sort. But all of it kind of leads back to this overall theme of like really looking at something different and then seeing things you didn't see before, like opportunities, um, passion projects, um, ideas, and so on. End of the month is the world. Ah, I love this. So you are completing a cycle in some way. There's something that um, you know, you're, you're feeling like you're done with the old, out with the old, in with the new. And, um, there is a cause to celebrate towards the end of the month here. I, I do feel like some of you might be going to a wedding, an engagement party, a, a birthday, um, something. There's some sort of gathering, um, where you're feeling good. I, the vision is like you're, you're out and about kind of at a gathering and you're, just, you're like kind of looking around and you're like, yeah, I feel good. So we have that word fulfillment. Um, you know, it's filling your cup. This might be a month where you are looking at social activities and getting out and about being a little bit more extroverted as a way to kind of feed yourself, feed your cup, fill your cup, feed your soul sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's a good month in that respect. All right, let's get some clarifiers here for Taurus clarifiers. What do we need to know about this month? Thank you so much, angels. Okay. So the six of water, this is interesting. Uh, the six of water sometimes is a blast from the past. So this might be an idea or something that started in the past and it's coming back. Um, some, somebody from your past or a situation or an idea kind of circling back up and maybe you're ready for it now. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more empowered for it now. Um, the one hang up that I'll have with this card is if this is kind of a, a thing from your past that's coming back and it's lighting you up, don't let it be a double edged sword as far as like you getting nostalgic or sad that it didn't happen before. Let that go. Take your power back and just say, it doesn't matter if it didn't work out in the past. It's going to work out now. I've got the hope. I've got the power. I'm at peace with myself and where I'm at. Things are going to be different this time. And it really could be. Um, now, the other way that I'm going to read this card is that you this might be linked to children um, or healing your own inner child. So kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of going into that. Also, we've got two sixes on the tables. You might want to be looking for that number this month as um, uh, to validate the reading. Look at this. This is very similar to the Ace of Fire. We're talking about a new endeavor, a fresh creativity. Now, this leads me to think that this could be um, a romance that's resurging. So if you are single, this could be... Um, you're looking at someone or the dating scene itself in a different way. Perhaps you travel and you meet someone on your travels. Perhaps there's somebody from your past that's kind of coming back and you're like, "Ugh, didn't work out then. Well, you're feeling a little flirty about it now. Um, or this could be a whole new person that comes in and just lights you up. Now, what I'm getting from this card is that you've been studying, you've been serious, you've been learning, you've been um, student, okay? You've really been in this mode of 
um, learning and growing. You've been focused. Someone could very well come into your life and you're like, whoa. And they actually grab your attention. And it's been a while since someone has grabbed your attention, actually spun your head. Now, if you're in a relationship, this is definitely a resurgence of passion within that relationship where you're looking at your partner like, whoa, I have not really seen you like that in a while. <laughs> and we, we're just turning up the flame here. So, yeah, there's definitely a, these two cards here lead me to believe that there is a surgence or resurgence of some sort of passion. It's very fiery. You are flirting like a school kid. Okay, going to the end of the month here. Um, make sure that in all the hustle and bustle of you being social, perhaps falling in love, re-falling in love, or taking an idea and really reworking it to where it really works for you this month, there's a lot going on and a lot of changes and a lot that has to do with other people. Make time for yourself. Make sure that in all of this that you are making time for yourself. Now, this isn't just like time to like hang out and do your nails. This is like serious time that you can hear your own thoughts, that you can meditate, stand back from things, look at it from a detached point of view so that you can see the whole picture. And that's really what's going to save you. And that is actually they're they're kind of circling back down to back around to this card to, to maintain your own personal power and to feel empowered this month, you do need time with you. You need time to really have conversations with yourself and answer your own questions, coach yourself, advise yourself, be your own therapist, tell yourself the things you would tell a friend who is dealing with that same problem. And really show up for yourself in a way that you're like, wow, I'm really cool. I just solved my problem. And all I needed was some time to just talk it out with myself, journal it out. Um, or with all this fire, the page in earth or page in air, I mean, ace, it could be dancing it out, singing it out, painting it out, walking it out, working out at a gym and working it out. But it really is important that you spend time with you and accepting all of you your age, your looks, your gender, your situation, really accept it, really become your own best friend and coach. Um, that is really where you get your power this month, Taurus, is in your own self-acceptance. And it's almost like with that energy, you're drawing to you maybe a, a second chance for success and love. Really looks amazing. I, of course, am sending you so much love and light and everything right. Happy New Year again and angel blessings.